Hey guys, Andrew McComb here, the founder and CEO of Golf University. And this Golf University tip from the pro, I'm with Laurie Montague, the former Australian women's coach and co-coach of the Indonesian golf team. We're at the Jundalup Golf Resort in Perth, Western Australia, and Laurie's gonna teach us how to eliminate the chipping and pitching shanks. But before we start, and if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell icon below so that I can notify you every time a new episode is released. And if you stick around until the end of this episode, I'm gonna give you access to our famous Golf University skill assessment. It's helped thousands of our members, just like you, find and fix the one thing that's killing your scores, your handicap, and your game. Plus, we'll give you free access to the specific video coaching program from one of our world-class golf instructors so that you can feel more confident, consistent, and in control of this area of your game. But before I help you find and fix this area of your game, let's find out how to eliminate the dreaded chipping and pitching shanks. This tip from the pro brought to you by Golf University, the world's premier golf improvement program. You know, I don't think there is a sh harder shot in golf or a more terrifying shot in golf than the, the shank. Now, some people might argue that hitting across water is terrible and, and much worse, but I'm gonna tell you that most of the people I've ever worked with over the years, the shank is a terrifying shot. And in, in today's segment, what I wanna do is really talk to you about how they occur and a very simple method that you can use that will help you to get out of them fast and permanently. So let's talk about it for a moment. Let's, let's talk about what the problem is. Someone stands over the golf ball and they set up to it and they make a swing and then this thing rockets sideways off the club face. Now for a lot of people, they tend to be hit out of this part of the club here, right into the heel of the golf club and even onto the hosel of the golf club here. This is where it tends to happen. Now here's the reason it happens most of the time. There are a couple of different types. I'm gonna focus on the most common one. What tends to happen is this. The golfer sets up to the ball. They can have a pretty good style. And here's the thing you need to understand. The golf club is on the ground in front of me right now. So this is in front of me. This would be to the side of me and this would be behind me. People at Shank tend to get the golf club from in front of them too much to behind them too quickly. Now, if you look at this golf club and I hold it there, you can see that the golf club now is pointing somewhere over here. The golf club head is a long way away from the handle. So when they swing down, the golf club is gonna swing on two inside to outer path. And because the golf club is moving away from them too much, they tend to strike it in the heel in this area of the club. As a reaction to that, some people will take it too much behind them and then throw the club back over this way and get them going the other way. Either way you look at it, what we've got here is a golf club that is just too much behind the body line. That is the problem. Now the reason for that is when people swing the golf club back, this is what happens. We've got two wrist functions that I wanna talk about here. The first one is wrist cocking. We're all familiar with that. The second one is called wrist rolling, where the wrist is doing this. So when you get a combination of a wrist cock and a wrist roll, the club face gets in very, very open position compared to where it started. So if I start here and it's straight, but I cock and roll the club behind me, it opens the golf club up. So when I bring it back down, not only is the golf club swinging in the wrong direction, the face is really open. So you've got no chance of getting the golf ball to go in that direction. So how do we sort it out? Well, it's not so hard. Here's the key. The thing you need to remember is this. The golf club for a pitch shot starts on the ground in front of you. When you swing back, you keep the golf club in front of your body. You don't let the golf club get over into this place here because you'll never be able to get out of these shanks if you do that. So let me show you. So we've got the golf club here it swings back and it stays in front. Now I turn my shoulders and I make sure the club stays in front of me all the way through. So it doesn't end up anywhere other than in front of me. Let me play a shot, show you what it looks like.
Now that's turned out pretty good. And what that was, what helped that situation was the fact that I kept the golf club in front of me. Now, is there a way we can do that? Is there a simple prop we can use? Yeah, we can use a bunker rake. Take a bunker rake, place it on the ground like this in the direction that you want to go, like this. Put a ball on this side of it, kind of a little scary, but I'm going to put a ball right there, just near it. There's enough room there you can see. Now, when I go back, the golf club is going to have to travel above this part of the bunker rake. And what I want it to be doing is the club is going to still be in front of me like the rake is here. What I don't want to be doing is this, because I think you can see with the bunker rake on the ground, if the golf club is over here, then I would probably hit the rake. Now, of course, I don't want to do that. So you've got to be careful with this, but this is to, to really illustrate a point for you. So golf club on the ground, keep the golf club in front. So it's going to go back and through. And there's another golf shot that's traveling down the line. So the key to eliminating the, the shank, you can cock your wrist, but you've got to watch that you don't cock and roll the club. So cocking the wrist to the side without this club face angle opening up is key, number one. Secondly, make sure the club stays in front of you. Turn your body with it so the club's still staying in front of you and you will not hit any more shanks. You will hit the ball onto the green every time. Eliminate the shank, eliminate the fear of the shank and play a lot better. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this Golf University tip from the pro. Put a yes in the comments below if you found it useful or ask a question in the comments if you need even more help. And as promised earlier, we wanna help you find and fix the one thing that's killing your golf scores, your handicap and your game. So to access the Golf University skill assessment and free video coaching program, go to golfuniversity.tv forward slash golf skill assessment or click the link in the description below. And to help you feel even more confident, consistent, and in control of your golf game, I also want to invite you to join the 19th Hole Clubhouse and Golf Channel. This is where our passionate and inspiring members belong to watch, learn, grow, meet, and share inspiration as golfers. You can join the 19th Hole for free at the 19thhole.club or click the link in the description below. And as a member, you'll have access to hundreds of golf lessons, travel episodes, and documentaries. Plus, you'll get member-only discounts on our golf schools, tournaments, travel tours, and signature programs. And if you're a golf addict, like me, you can also join our members-only Facebook group by clicking the link in the description below. And remember, if you've enjoyed this lesson, or you'd like to ask some questions, or you've even got an idea or a suggestion for another lesson, leave a like and a comment below and I'll do my best with my coaches to answer them for you. And if you've got any other golfing friends who'd benefit from this lesson, hit the share buttons below as well. And remember to hit the subscribe and the bell icon too, so I can notify you every time a new episode's released. Thanks for watching, sharing, and commenting, guys. I'll see you in the 19th hole.